Welcome back to City Life, here from the Castlefield Gallery. Still to come on the show, I chat to the boys from the musical Never Forget. But first, on to a new musical bus tour happening in the city. Revealing the history of Burnage's most famous sons, the Gallagher brothers and Manchester icon Morrissey and the Smiths. Is the creation of Inspiral Carpets drummer Craig Gill and music expert Phil Gatenby. Slip inside the eye of your The reason I started to do it was um, because I had a record shop in Athletics Palace and um, obviously all the Manchester and Factory records were the most popular and people used to buy them and then say uh, what can I see for New Order and Joy Division, and what's left Factory, is that Hacienda still there? And I used to um, draw badly drawn maps and send people out and say get on this bus and I'm sure people were getting lost as, as, as they went through, walked through Salford and getting lost on, on, a, on some estate or other. So I thought with my experiences um, with uh, the band playing at these venues and also that I used to DJ at the Hacienda and the Boardwalk, I thought well I could combine a tour and guide people around and also throw a few tales and anecdotes in as well to make it a bit more personal. So it's not just a case of saying this is where the Hacienda used to be. Um, people actually got a bit more of a guided tour and also as well so taking the cue from um, the Magical Mystery Tour in, in, in Liverpool for the Beatles which had been going for a number of years. I couldn't be actually believe that there was actually nothing in Manchester that was promoting uh, Manchester music. I wrote the book uh, Morris's Manchester in 2002. Uh, that came about, I used to go on a fan's website and people would just um, ask questions, you know, where's Strange Ways compared to Morris's house and where's Salford Lads Club and where's this place? And uh, I just used to reply and, and I got chatting to one or two people uh, on the website and uh, I went to work and blew up the A to Z and just, just coloured them in with a highlighter, you know, here's Strange Ways, here's the Lads Club, here's his house in Stretford and just sent it off to, to, to one or two people in America. And then about three months later, somebody else asked the same question and one of the people I'd sent the map to, um, somebody, if you email Phil on this address, he'll send you a map and I end up sending maps you know, to Japan and Australia and everything. And one or two people wrote back and said, well, why don't you do a guide? And I thought, well, there's only five places you can't do a guide. You know? And then about a year later, I started thinking, well, how many places are there? And I came up with about 30 with gig venues and places where they worked and places where they met and all this sort of stuff. And uh, I went away and wrote the book, Morris's Manchester. This is the double-decker bus that you'll be going on your tour on. It's affectionately known as the Moz Bus after Morrissey, of course. The Morrissey tour will take about three and a half hours and the Oasis tour, two and a half hours. And Craig and Phil will play you some very decent tunes along the way. Right, this is the uh, house in Burnage where the Gallaghers grew up and uh, still home to Mother Peggy. That's so exciting! I've, I've actually stayed on the uh, sofa here a couple of nights, yes. Really? And we've uh, come back from clubs very late. So how long did they live here for? Um, from about 1985, obviously to till the early, um, to the mid-90s really. And you Peggy know. still lives in there? Yes, yes, she uh, doesn't want to move, apparently they've offered to buy a uh, farmhouse in Ireland, but she doesn't want to leave uh, friends in Burnage. Good on her. So I imagine as well they come down here and visit her, so it's still a living oasis home. Well that's it, yes, I know when they uh, do the gigs in Manchester, um, they always come round and visit them on for a cup of tea, so uh, chances are that uh, they might be here when we uh, actually do the tour. Yeah, I feel like I want to knock on, not allowed, probably. <laughs> We are at Sifter's Record Shop, which was immortalised in the um, in the lyrics to Oasis' second single, Shaker Maker. Um, the story came about that um, Noel was uh, travelling down this road in a taxi on the way to uh, record the second single at Johnny Marr's studio in Altrincham, and um, one of the lines or one of the verses in, in the song. Um, was uh, copied off uh, a famous uh, song 
um, which was using a Coca-Cola advert, I'd like to teach the world, world to sing. Um, so for copyright reasons, um, they needed to change, change the words. And uh, when Noel picked Liam up, Liam was panicking because he, he didn't have a verse for the song. And Liam said, don't, don't panic, don't panic, everything will be all right. So as he came down this road, where the traffic lights changed and the taxi stopped just here, and Noel got his pen and paper out and wrote down, Mr. Sifter sold me the songs when I was just 16. Now he stops at traffic lights, but only when they're green. And Mr. Sifter is in there today. <laughs> Immortalised, and now um, people come from, from Japan Gosh. just to have the picture taken outside, outside here. OK, so we're on the Morrissey tour now, and this is very, very iconic. Where are we? Salford Lads Club. <laughs> this is the, the mecca of all the uh, Smiths and Morrissey related places. and. Uh, this is where fans from around the world flock to because the, um, the band stood on the very spot where we are now uh, for a picture that was on the inside sleeve of uh, The Queen Is Dead, the 1986 album. And we've also just arrived here and there is a lady actually here from Germany, come all this way, just to come and have a look at this. There is, yeah, oh, I don't know if you'd like <laughs> from here, yeah. And this, this, is, this is what I find uh, often that you, know, you get here and, and fans literally from all over the world. I was speaking to Leslie who runs the place here and he said there were four people from Chile yesterday you know, so people do come and find this spot out. You know, it's uh, taxi drivers. If you get, I'm, I'm led to believe, if you get the taxi at uh, Piccadilly Station, say Salford Lads Club, they'll know exactly where to exactly. come because it's a regular, it's a regular trip for them. Where's your favourite landmark then on the Morrissey Tour? It's the Iron Bridge. Mm. Uh, purely because for the graffiti, every time I go, there's a there's a new uh, fresh graffiti, and it's all you know. Uh, they'll put the name, they'll put where they're from, or they'll they'll quote a, uh, a lyric. You know, uh, there's different lyrics all over the place, and and the earliest lyric I can see, or the earliest um, graffiti was '95. So the bridge hasn't been touched by the council since 1995, and it, so it always changes. And I, and I get you know every time I haven't just seen that one before, you know, so I get a thrill on that. Yes, well, it's a good one to um, for for parents that uh, maybe kind of trying to educate the, ed educate the kids and steer them away from the, uh, the X Factor and, and Pop Idol and uh, maybe try to show them uh, some decent music like the Smiths and, and New Order and Joy Division. And obviously I don't think you can understand Manchester music without really hearing the story of the Free Trade All concert, the Sex Pistols and, 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 and really you know, the walking tour starts from that. But not only that, if people do come along as a family and, and introduce the kids, then the kids will also learn about the, uh, the Peterloo Massacre, which happened on the site, and then the Bob Dylan uh, concert that happened there. So there's sort of a bit of Manchester's natural history, which is, which is linked in, really, which is, is, it goes hand in hand with the music, you know. And, and you know, I've, I've took people on tours, and uh, they've come on tours, and they say uh, they used to go nasty on the boardwalk, but they've got family over or friends from, uh, from Europe. They brought them round and said, oh, well, I've only come along to show them. I've been in all these places. Um, so I didn't think I'd find it that interesting, but I've actually learned loads about uh, Manchester and Manchester music. Don't forget, scheduled tours cost just £10 and private tours are available. Just visit the website for more information. And that's all from this week's City Life. But I'll